identify the structures given in this image. So here in this image what we see are these holes which are present on the lingual surfaces of the deciduous incisors. And we have been asked to identify these structures. So these structures are actually the gubernacular canals. Okay. Gubernacular canals are going to be seen with those deciduous teeth that have a permanent successor. Okay. This is very important because the gubernacular canals are actually the remnants of the other gubernacular cords which it contained. Okay. Now to understand this, first we need to understand how tooth development takes place, especially those uh, teeth which are going to be successional teeth. So as we know that uh, the tooth uh, develops from its tooth germ, okay, that is from the dental lamina, etc. Now those teeth that have a successional teeth, for example, a deciduous central incisor has a successional uh, permanent central incisor. So the successional tooth is going to develop from the offshoot of the dental lamina, which is also going to have the uh, primary tooth bud. Okay, so this tooth that is going to develop here is going to develop into the primary incisor or the uh, deciduous incisor and this offshoot that is given from this dental lamina okay this is the successional tooth germ so this is going to develop into the permanent incisor so the successional tooth germ always lies in close proximity to the primary tooth germ okay now when this tooth is developed and when it erupts into the oral cavity this tooth germ is going to lie in close proximity to it what we can appreciate here is that this uh, tooth germ, okay, so here is the dental lamina, right? So there is a connection between this tooth germ and the lamina propria of the oral mucous membrane, right? So in uh, the successional tooth germ, it continues to maintain this connection with the oral mucous membrane, okay? That is known as the gubernacular cord. So here what you see, okay, in this radiograph you can identify better. This is the deciduous tooth, okay. This is the primary central incisor. This is the permanent central incisor tooth germ, okay. So you can see this dental follicle that is present around it, okay. So this, this tooth is going to develop and it is going to be covered by a bony crypt. Except from here, this segment you see here, this radiolucent line, this is the connection that is there between the lamina propria, okay, and the oral mucous membrane and the follicle of this tooth germ. So, this connection that is maintained even within the bony, so the bony crypt that is going to cover the tooth, it does not cover it completely. There is going to be a connection or the soft tissue component which is connecting this follicle to the lamina propria of the oral mucous membrane and this is known as the gubernacular cord. Okay, so the gubernacular cord is going to contain remnants of dental lamina and some epithelial cells. So, when uh, this cord, which is a soft tissue, okay, when it is seen on dried skull segments, it appears empty, like empty holes, okay. So, this is the histological section of the gubernacular cord. So, supposing there is a, a, a primary incisor which has erupted here somewhere, this is the successional uh, tooth germ, okay. This is here the successional tooth germ is coming down. This is from here the successional tooth germ is starting. So, this is the bony crib that is covering the tooth. Okay, that is developing, the permanent tooth that is developing. But this follicle continues to maintain this soft tissue connection to the oral mucous membrane. So, this is the oral mucous membrane, right? And this follicle continues to maintain some connection, soft tissue connection with the or lamina propria of the oral mucous membrane through these epithelial remnants and through the remnants of the dental lamina. So this on a histological segment appears like this. This is the gubernacular cord. Okay. So if so, this is all bone here. Okay. And this is an opening, soft tissue opening. So on a dried skull, when all the soft tissue is removed, this will appear empty as empty canals. So this is how they appear. Okay, this is how they appear on a dried skull where all the soft tissue is removed. This is how the canals appear. Okay, so this is going to be seen or this is characteristic of those teeth, those des deciduous teeth which are going to have a su successor, okay, a permanent successor such as incisors. So, we know the deciduous incisors have a permanent successor that is the permanent incisors. So, that is why these canals are seen here. So, how these canals help is during the eruption of the permanent teeth, okay, these keep on expanding because there is osteoclastic activity that is going to start taking place around these canals, 
okay so this is going to keep enlarging and enlarging so the canals will keep enlarging okay and this is from where the emergence of the permanent tooth is going to take place okay so once this exfoliates then the permanent tooth is going to start erupting from here because these are going to enlarge 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 and the permanent tooth is ultimately going to emerge out from these canals okay that's why they are important so this is the gubernacular canals now the incisive foramen would be a single foramen that would be seen in the center of the incisors okay but that is not the one that is marked here the incisive foramen is the one that is going to transmit the incisive nerves and vessels now the canals of Hirschfeld's and Zucker candle okay these are the canals that are going to be seen between the interdental bone so the interdental bone consists of the cribriform plate okay which is going to uh, so the cribriform plate okay so this is the root of one tooth okay this is the root of another tooth now the interdental bone that is present between these two teeth so if this is the root of one tooth okay and this is the of the other tooth so this interdental bone that is present okay which is the cribriform plate because it consists of uh, uh, it is going to be uh, uh, interspersed by nerves and vessels okay blood vessels from the peri periodontal ligament so that's why it's called the cribriform plate so these interdental bone which consists of these perforating canals which are going to transmit nerve uh, nerves and blood vessels these are known as the, uh, the canals of uh, Zucker candle and Hirschfeld's okay so they are nutrient canals which are going to be so this is the supporting alveolar bone here you can see this is the alveolar bone so the canals which are going to be radiating through these bones are known as the nutrient canals of Zucker candle and Hirschfeld now what about the Wokman's canals so the Wokman's canals are canals which are going to be present between the Havasian canals okay so compact bone or any bone consists of concentric lamellae of bones okay now each concentric lamellae is a haversian canal which consists of a central a blood vessel around which bone starts depositing in a circumferential manner or in a concentric circles so this is how the blood vessel of one canal is going to be this is how it the uh, blood vessel of the second canal is going to be so these are two concentric circles now the canals which are going to run or which are going to interconnect between two haversian systems are known as Wokman's canal so this canal which runs in the center of the lamellae is known as the haversian canals and a canal which connects two haversian canals is known as the Wokman's canal okay so here what is uh, given is the gubernacular canal and not the canals of Hirschfeld's or Kander or Wokman's canals.